Hi, it's Jeremy, and I bet you've received something like this. It's literally a screenshot from a phone that says, can you print this and put it on a t-shirt? And you've probably thought to yourself, no, God, please, no, 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 no. Well, I'm gonna show you one of my favorite tools for vectorizing logos and simple artwork. It's called vectorizer.ai. And if by the time you get to the end of this video and you're convinced this is one of the best tools you need to have in your arsenal, it's only $10 a month and you can find the affiliate link down in the description below. It helps support what I do on this channel. Really simple interface, this is what you're gonna start with. All right, here's that screenshot that we got from our customer. Just drag and drop it in. We can crop it down like this to get rid of all that extra stuff. We know we don't want, we just want the picture. Click okay. Give it a moment to process. Usually takes a few seconds depending on how complex the image is. And there we have it. We can zoom in and see. See how pixelated the left one is and the right one's got those clean lines. Again, that's the uh, raster version versus the vector version. And a cool tool in this particular software is this little palette up here, which lets you pick the colors. Now in this case, it actually picked up seven different shades and part of that's because of the low resolution that it was, but it's kind of using its intelligence to realize this is probably only a three color image, this yellow, this black, and this white. Now, if you wanted to remove the background, you could totally do that. You just click on either the background itself or you click on the color here in this palette and you can click this little checkbox by the eyeball. That makes it transparent. Now, it did make these inside colors transparent. And so you might not want to do that or you can go back and fill those in in your vector editing software like Illustrator or Corel Draw. Another thing you can do in here is change the color. Maybe the customer likes this logo, but wants a different color palette. You can change that really easily. Just click on the black here. Let's say it's gonna go on a black shirt, so you definitely don't wanna do that uh, black color. What you could do is you could change this to maybe like a royal blue. There you go. But that's making the yellow look horrible. So let's change that yellow color from uh, mustardy yellow. Let's just, let's just go weird. We're gonna go weird right now, okay? And then if I wanna preview kind of what that's gonna look like on a black shirt, I could change this color to black as well and see kind of what that's gonna look like. That looks horrible from a design standpoint, I'll be honest with you, but I'm just showing you the capability of this software. I'm also gonna get rid of that because I don't want to print black. But there we go. Easy peasy, changed out the color of this thing. Okay, I don't like what I've done, so I'm gonna hit this undo up here at the top to get myself back to the original colors. Let's knock out that white close it. It's going to reprocess it again. Your tools up here in the top are pretty straightforward. This previews just the image you're like the vector file that you've created. This is a side by side comparison. So you can verify that it didn't mess things up. This is a zoom in and out, but I can also use my scroll wheel on my mouse to zoom in and out. This goes to the original size. That's a, a, just a different ratio zooming in between them. And these are thumbs up, thumbs down to let the developers know if you like the software or not. Then click download. If you have not signed up for this subscription, you won't be able to go past this step, but subscription is $10 a month. I think it's totally worth it. You charge a customer a $15 artwork charge one time and it's paid for itself. Now you've got options here. You can export an SVG, EPS, PDF, DXF, which is like a, a laser cutter CAD type of file. Uh, and then PNG. Uh, I tend to like to use EPS. These are the default settings that I've used. I can see some situations where there might be more detail in the image. You wanna change the line fit tolerance. But generally, these are the settings I like to use. Click download, and then I can pull it into Illustrator, CorelDRAW, or some other vector editing type of program. All right, and this is my logo, the super colorful version of it with a black background. Drag it in, click OK. Again, depending on how complex it is, it might take a little while to process, but most of the time for most graphics, you're talking five, maybe 10 seconds for it to process. And you can see here, it's kind of merged some colors. So that's why we use this little color palette up here in the corner. 
So I'm gonna go down here to the bottom and tell it how many colors I want it to utilize. And I want it to use all the colors it's picking up. There we go. You can also limit it to like 10 colors. It'll simplify based on similarity and things like that. But for what I wanna do, uh, I wanna do all of the colors in there. Now with a simple graphic like this, I could make it print ready right out of this software for DTF. So what I can do is click on this black background. I'm gonna remove it. Then I'm going to click OK. Again, let it process. And then I'm gonna download it. And this time I'm gonna download it as a PDF or I could also do a PNG, which I could then import directly into my RIP software. Finally, let's say you have a logo file that has a gradient in it. Here's an easy way to clean this file up so you can turn it into a gradient later in Illustrator or Corel Draw or some other vector editing program. Click here on the color palette and we're gonna basically just merge all of the colors in this file except for the text. So now we've got a clean, well, it looks ugly right now, but now we have a clean single shape that's one color. So once we bring it into Illustrator or Corel Draw, all we have to do is make a compound shape and put a gradient over it. I hope you see now why this is my favorite vectorizing tool. I've used a lot of them. I've used Illustrator, I use Vector Magic, I've tried a lot of the different softwares out there, and this one just does everything better for simple designs. Obviously, if you're trying to do a stylized look with like converting a photo to a stylized looking vector file, Illustrator's a better option for that, but when it comes to just simply vectorizing a simple logo with text, especially, most other vectorizers struggle with text, Vectorizer.ai does an amazing job. Um, I think these are all the reasons why this is my favorite tool and why I'm happy to pay 10 bucks a month forever <laughs> to have this tool. Let me know in the comments below if you tried this tool out or if you've used this tool before. And if there's some feature or function in the software that you think I've missed, let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.